Okay, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the class. So this is going to be, actually, this is the first class uh, for our TSC 365 information measures for this spring. And uh, we have many students in this class. So I want to just, you know, emphasize the instruction for public policy uh, before we start. So please make sure that you wear your mask. Uh, this is the part A to you, no matter if you have vaccinated or boosted or not. Because as long well as you are in your classroom, please make sure that you are wearing a mask. And you may also, you could, you know, just check your neighbors and invite them if you also want to make sure that you are safe and also your neighbors are safe. Um, uh, so if everything is great, then let's, let's start. Okay, so first let me introduce our uh, instructor, Professor Adam Gay. And Adam, would you like to introduce yourself? Yep, hello. Uh, hey everyone, hey people on Zoom. Um, Tiffany's gonna get into it, but this is going to be a, so basically um, you may have noticed on your, when signing up for this course, it was a hybrid course and you'll technically only meet one day a week. So that's a one day meet week in person. So there's two sections of CSE 365, both at the same time, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So basically what we're doing is merging those two classes into one big giant 600 person class. Um, and so you'll be kind of in person on, you'll be in person on Tuesdays, they'll be in person on Thursdays and uh, Zoom recordings of everything will be available. So you can join uh, the Thursdays on Zoom or on, um, uh, the call, but uh, anyways, uh, to introduce myself, uh, oh, hello. I don't know, that's a fun sound. Uh, where's my mouse? There we go. You have to click that one. Ah, there we go. Uh, cool. So I uh, did my PhD at UC Santa Barbara on the beach uh, there, at, at which time then I came here to uh, ASU. A little bit about my background I did like a four plus one type of thing at UC Santa Barbara. Uh, went after I graduated, worked at Microsoft full time as a software developer up in Seattle, and then uh, really decided I loved doing research. And so I went back for my PhD, after which I came here at ASU, uh, during which I got into security during my undergrad by playing in capture the flag competitions, which is something we'll definitely go over in this course. I played with shellfish, then um, I helped start a hacking team here at ASU called the Pwn Devils, which has since kind of shifted its name to the mysterious ASU Hacking Club. Uh, you can find out more information about them there. Uh, I'll have office hours Tuesdays from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., uh, except for today, because it's the first day. I don't think you guys uh, need anything. And um, anyway, you can, so the theme of, I think, this whole course will be kind of hybrid. So there'll be both uh, in-person options or remote options, even for office hours. So office hours, you can join through Zoom or you can come to my office and I should be there. Cool. And now. Yeah, thanks. And let me also introduce myself. My name is Stephanie. And uh, you can just call me Tiffany. You don't have to say that Professor Bell, Dr. Bell, whatever. I'm flat chair, but you don't have to. Uh, I am an assistant professor at 6C. Uh, actually, now we turn it from 6C to Sky. Um, a new name of the school, but the professors are still there. The students are also nice and there. Uh, and before I joined ASU, I was a teacher student at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, my research is software security. And what I did is to look at how to uh, find the vulnerabilities face them or mediate them or respond to them in a more, in a smarter way. So I call it a stack of software. So I just want to say my research is not just about finding bugs, but also you know more things about how to handle the bugs, optimally, and how to you know think about the uh, best mitigation strategies for vulnerabilities, especially for software vulnerability for a social good. Um, you can see more things about my research from my personal website, and also you can actually check the research. Uh, both Adam and mine from Cefcom is um, cefcom.asu.edu. There is a lab that we are uh, co-hosting. It's a fun, fun, uh, you know, research lab, and we have many students over there as well doing fun research. Not only just software security, 
but like cybersecurity in general. So my office hour is gonna be Thursday, 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. And I'll just make that online. So you can you know, go to Zoom and click the link and then I will be there and we can chat from there. Um, uh, those information, they will be online. We will have a, we already have a course website, thanks to Adam, Adam set it up. So those information will all be there. So you don't have to write it down. You don't have to record it now. And later on, all you need to know is our course website. And from there, you can get like the slide, the, uh, those links, the Zoom information, the time information, etc. And then I will talk about the course logistics later. Um, and then we will have uh, a decent amount of TAs and undergrad TAs, UG TAs. I don't think that any of the TAs is here today, but we will have five future students, PhD uh, TAs that will help you guys with all your questions, you know, homeworks or CDF, like the final exam, but it's more of just like a competition wise, it's not really like a written exam but like they can help you with those questions. And also we have UGT and integrate TH. We will also help you answer those questions or you know, host a special lectures uh, if needed or slides presentations. So um, I'm not gonna introduce them right now because they're not here, but you will get to know them later on. And also you can get those information about those TAs later on from our course website as well. <coughs> All right, now it's the fun part, course setup. So as Adam said, we're gonna have a hybrid class for this semester. Uh, I know that you guys have booked Tuesday with this session, right? And if you look at the course catalog, it says that it's gonna be one week, one time, only Tuesday, and it's gonna be one hour only. Uh, however, you will have an offline session, uh, which is gonna be on Thursday, same time, 9 a.m. to 10, 15. And during that time, actually this classroom will have another session, which is gonna be hosted uh, maybe by Adam, maybe by me, depending on the content. And you, you can stay in Zoom and then attend this meeting, uh, attend this class online, or you can also just wait until the recording uh, comes out and then check the recording from YouTube. Basically, you can stay online at the same time or do the adjustment rights. Um, so please make sure that you, you know, attend the session in person if you want. Uh, but it's not required. And right? we're not going to have like, attendance or some other things. We want to make sure that everyone is comfortable coming to in-person class and also, you know, stay safe and for those that are but you, I want to make sure that you did either listen to the course or the attendant person, making sure that you get all the knowledge because those are necessary for your major assignment and for those who get So if you do want to attend you know, both classes in person, feel free. We're, we're happy to do that. If you're not like for real, we're not just going to. Uh, stop them from doing that, but make sure that, uh, you know, there's enough space. So it's like, now we're in the Tuesday session, and if you go to the Thursday session and found there's no space over there, uh, I want you to be aware that you're going to have, like, mess for our class, and then those who are attending the Thursday session. So please make sure that you leave space for those people in their own session. Okay. And then, we have a little everything course on Zoom, and we will also post those recordings later on in YouTube, and you can get those recordings, those links from our course website. So if you really want to remember something now or take a note, just take the note, take the course website, and then you, you can find everything on there. And also we're going to use the other. We find that uh, so I have a nice past experience it's sort of a kind of less question organizing, you know, seeing there. So we're going to re keep using the other for question and answers. And when you ask questions, we'll make sure that, you know, 
for technical questions or something that is not personal, please be mindful and make it public so that everyone can access, just share the resources, share those answers with your friends. Uh, and also, I want to just emphasize that all announcements will be sent to Tiara. So please make sure that you register Tiara so that you will get all the announcements, including things like Hey, the size, uh, we're going to extend the science deadline, or we're going to extend something else, or we're going to you know, check the mistake that we found from the appointment, etc. So make sure that you register your data so that you can get the most update announcement. And we may not post those announcements in course of time. So basically, after you set up everything, data is the most reliable resource for you to get an update about this course. All right, and then uh, let me just go to the course website real quick and let's just go through things over there. We can do that later. There's a section at the end to go through the syllabus. Okay. The, the syllabus. okay. Do you want to do that then? Yeah. All right. I think that's pretty much about the course setup. Any questions? No. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. No. Okay. And no one cares about grades? Oh, interesting. They're all getting A's. Huh. Okay. Sounds like a plan. But we do have, you know, of course, we have an average. We also will have an A plus. And also, like, we also have a plus minus rate. But we don't have wide rate. So, we don't. so make sure that you get the right grade. And if you go to the website, you will see, you know, the current definition of each grade, like the which scores will also which levels that so we have to which grades, but it's subject to change. We may change it because of the distribution of the score, etc. So that was just a standard that we put right now, but it doesn't mean that it will be the final standard, just so you guys know. All right. Yes, please. Uh, can you reiterate which one you did by uh, how far class we're going to be in person and the other half of the like Tuesday was we're going to come in person and then Thursday we can do or? Yes. Yes, the so Tuesday is going to be coming in person and Thursday will be in person. Okay. okay, more questions? Yes. How do we view our grade? How do we view our grade? How do we view our grade? You mean, do you view our grade or do you have to see? Oh, I see, I see. So we don't have a way, probably, we don't have a way to post your grades at the next one about the day, but you will have one grade at a time, and I will give you the way that you want to tackle your grade, like, you know, which question, say, that like, assign one uh, has 10% for a final grade, so you can just tackle it by yourself all the time. And we'll email you throughout the semester. Yes, yeah, so we'll email you know, at some point, just like, so you know that maybe at the four final, I think that's what we did. Uh, we should do, after, I don't know, because it just depends on the cadence of the course, however many assignments there are. Like, it shouldn't, and just to make sure that our records match your records because you'll know every assignment you'll know exactly what your grade was on that assignment as you do it and so there should be no surprises that's just a sync up to make sure hey what we have for your grade is what you think you have for your grade right, right. we're probably going to do that one time in through at year. least twice maybe twice yeah. yeah yeah cool more questions okay yes So we are going to set up a sign-in submission. This is going to be equal to CF time. And I will talk about CTF later. Uh, so we will have a platform for everyone to submit a sign-in. It's going to be a uh, no version assignment, mostly just coding, programming. They'll also be aware or be prepared that you're going to be intensively programmed in this class. All right. No more questions, I suppose? Let me just start the introduction. So, now you guys asked me about assignments, asked about how to do the assignment, the assignment, the form of the assignment, and that brings us about CTF. And raise your hand if you've heard about CTF before, okay? Nice. Right. Good. We do have a lot of people know about CTF. But it's okay that you don't know it because by the end of the semester, you will not only just know it, you will be very familiar with it. And I, 
I expect that you will probably have a love hate feeling about CDF, but we will see. All right, so CDF is short for capture those that. And you may have heard about that, you know, for another view that goes kind of game. But for cybersecurity, the way they go, the, the way that it works is that this is competition that people try to use their cybersecurity skill to like maybe explore the machine or try to take advantage of a program so that they can get the information from either the program or the computer or like a network server, etc., to get a specific content over there, which is call that's why we call it a flat. So basically you need to use your skill to get a specific message over there. And if you have played puzzle before, so this is a little bit like the puzzle game that we play, except that here you need to use your cyber skill in order to get the piece of information. And DEF CON CTF is, uh, do I see DEF CON here? No, but you will see, you see VC, that is short for DEF CON. And this is the picture, this is the poster for 2019. Yep. If I remember correctly. Yes. So, yeah, so this is the uh, poster for 2019 DEF CON CTF. And DEF CON is one of the toppest, at least, actually, in my mind, I would say the top. The top of the hacking competition, the top CTF competition in the world. And uh, Adam and I, we are uh, the poster, and actually, CNU, uh, which is the majority of the team, is called the order of Orso. We organize and host the DEF CON CTF since 2018. Yeah, since 2018. And now we finally retired, we're successful, we fired. Get that we're not murdered or killed because of those, you know, that guys exploiting our mission as well. But yeah, um, this is about that from here. Yeah. Um, so it is pretty fun. And if you have not heard about that, I will show you some picture and more challenges. Well, not really the technical part of the challenge, but like give you some interesting challenge that um, Adam and the other team members have designed for DEF CON CTF. So usually for DEF CON CTF, especially, um, right, so for the DEF CON CTF, uh, it will have many, many team attending, and it is composed of six qualifying CTFs around the world. Uh, and from those qualifying CTF, there will be like 16 or maybe 20, around 20 team elected from a thousand to 200 teams or even more to attend the final CTF. And then in the final CTF, uh, people are gonna exploit and attack each other. Uh, they'll be given a server or like a given, sorry, they'll be given uh, some services. So this is, they're gonna run the identical services and they're gonna exploit other people, but also try to catch themselves. They're gonna do a defense and attack CTF. But before that game, uh, during the qualification, the way that it works is that there will be challenges posted online, and then people are going to solve those challenges and try to get the score. And we call it a Jeopardy style CTF. And in our class, we'll, we're probably uh, we're going to mostly focus on Jeopardy style CTF. So for your assignment or for your final CTF, what we're going to do is that we will have those challenges that you see. Those are all different kinds of challenges so over there. And you will kind of like click and decide the challenge that you want to work on. And also get the flag. You're going to submit a flag. And the system is going to tell you whether or not you're correct. And then you will get the score, of course, if you're correct. So this is the school. Uh, this is the web page that we have for uh, DEF CON 2019. And you see that there are all different kind of uh, uh, challenges over there. And I believe that the yellow one means that they are currently active, they're available. And the bright yellow means that you already saw who get the score, right? And then the uh, purple one means that it's inactive at this point. So during that time, we do not release all the challenges at one time. Maybe this is going to be different from our CTF. You're going to have all the challenges at one time, 
but it doesn't really matter. As long as you're solving, you get a score, you're happy. All right, and then this is the scoreboard, which is also very interesting, right? So those scoreboard shows the scores and the status for each team. And you see that there are many people attending. I believe this is uh, yeah, this is this is called. So you see there are 24 teams about that, but this is only paid a lot. Actually, there are one K more teams attending, and you see that those methods of items each other they represent for a specific challenge. So those means that say team PPP dot those are the population and those are scores and those are the teams and their rankings. So uh as you will be able to see shall be the They are number five. Yes, number five. This is the team that Adam was in and probably Adam will it would have be been back. number one if I was still on the team. Oh, let's see this year. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yep. And then this is, as I said, like there are six qualifying CTFs of around the world. And then there are like those qualifications for CTF, many teams attending. That 16 teams will attend um, and will be invited to the finals, which is in Las Vegas. It's a lot of fun. And actually, you the DEF CON conference has. I would say maybe thousand or tens of thousands. 30,000 30, the last full in person. Actually, 2019 at 30,000 people. Yeah, 30,000 people um, gathering in Las Vegas. Uh, usually it's around early August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's super early, hot. Yeah, super hot. The, the, probably the hottest part, the hottest season in Las Vegas. And if you, and my personal recommendation for you guys is that if you are not very interested in that home, and don't go to Las Vegas in early August because at that time you're booking the reservation to be in sailing high because of all those hackers they're gonna occupy there. So don't be there if you don't want. But yeah, so this is the uh, place that they're hosting the final Delta CDL. And this is also year 2019, I believe. So you see that people. Paris? This was shoot. I actually don't remember the hotel. Right. I think Bally Paris. Paris. Yeah, yeah. Paris, Paris or Valley's one yeah. of the. It was in the um, like walkway. So the DefCon. Mm -hmm. It's actually out separate from DefCon itself. DefCon itself was. I think the entrance was to the right. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, we were right above to the left is like uh, overlooks the casino. Right. Yeah, where it is. That's interesting. You can tell it's 2019 because nobody's wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once upon a time. And there oh, this is a video, yeah. Yeah. That. So yes. this gives you a little more of a sense of the 16 teams. Oh, it just is the game. All right, so this is like every table is key. And those teams are just work to work together against all the teams of tech defense. And you see in the first you do the original story, right? And someone's playing game over there. And that is a challenge that you have to use your machine learning skill to control your small section to attack other people, but also uh, try to kind of invade from other people's bullet. All right, yep. And this is a very fun challenge that I think, Adam, you're involved in uh, creating this challenge, right? Uh, no, no, I observed it, but why well, was, I guess, involved in the uh, watching people lose their minds on this. So this was, uh, so Saturday morning, so the way the competition works, it's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, 10 hours on Friday, 10 hours on Saturday, and four hours on Sunday. So Saturday morning, after working all day on Friday uh, on challenges, the team showed up and we just handed each of them an Xbox, an original Xbox with these controllers. So one of the people on our team was actually super involved in um, Xbox emulation, like being able to run old Xbox games and understanding how that old Xbox works. So what they did was, I think we just told them just plug it in. There was a special network cable, plug it into the network and then turn it on and see what happens. So what we'd done is burned in into each of those Xboxes um, 
Doom, we got Doom to run on that Xbox. And so it would connect to, oh yeah, there we go. It would connect to one of our servers. So they would literally be playing capture the flag inside Doom. But the problem was when they started up, you couldn't actually fire your gun. So you could just run around and not actually uh, kill anybody or do anything. And so that what they had to do was actually the, I actually think the game was downloaded over the wire. So every time the system booted up, it downloaded Doom from our servers. So what they had to do was figure out how to like game hacks. So how to hack their game so that they could fire. Um, there was, uh, I think wall hacks and map hacks and all kinds yeah. of cool stuff that they could do to um, give themselves the edge and be better than uh, the other teams. So meanwhile, each of these rounds lasted, I think roughly 10 minutes where they would um, go around and have to like occupy a certain area that was the capture the flag location for points. And then that got them points kind of in our game. Right. And I remember you mentioned that there was a CMU guy from PPP who <laughs> is an expert in Doom. I think he's a professional Doom player. Yeah, and that was a big problem we didn't anticipate. Yes. Is that the teams, rather than hacking uh, as much as we wanted, they just put uh, somebody who was really good at playing Doom on this <laughs> and then scored a lot of points. Yes, yes. And as long as, you know, he uh, turned on the gun, he just turned on everything. Oh, and yeah. And then other teams didn't, uh, like, well, Shellfish uh, was yelling at us because they're like, we should have gotten more points. That round was not scored correctly. And when we looked at it, they had actually desynced their game client from the game server. So they <laughs> thought they were being all cool and like running through walls and killing people, but really they were just like in a corner running against the wall over and over again. <laughs> yeah, so those are the fun challenges about that process yet. And there are even more fun challenges. So for example, we have, uh, you know, challenges about a hacked iOS applications. Um, and also we have challenges for how to hack the learning method, like just like the, the flagship, um, that's a challenge that I just talked about. So you need to use your deep learning skill to do like a created your own, your network and then try to play with other people's, but also you can hack other people's like deep learning networks so that you will be able to use advanced for machine learning to link other people down. And there is a hack list machine. Uh, when is that? Is that is this a question that you create or? Uh, yeah. 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 You want to talk was, about that? Yeah, yeah so uh, back in the 80s, the list was actually a very popular, which you may know more nowadays as Scheme and uh, what's the Java one? I don't remember, but anyways, uh, Scala. Oh, Scala, is that right? No, anyways. Um, so back in the 80s, uh, they actually made CPUs that would run Lisp code itself. And so, uh, or actually technically a microcode. So they would compile the Lisp code down to a microcode that was actually executed by the special CPU. Um, and so I found an emulator for this and was able to run these Lisp machines from the early 80s. And then I wrote a web server for it. So they were talking to this, well, it looks like a web server, but it's actually this Lisp machine emulator. Uh, so they had to like, uh, reverse engineer it and decompile the thing and then find the bug that I had put in there and then exploit that bug. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. And, and as Adam mentioned, the Doom, very fun one. And uh, there is another challenge. It's about uh, shell code. So if you don't know shell code, that's fine. Just consider that as a piece of assembly. I suppose many of you have no like X 6, 64, those assemblies. And you know that those assemblies in shell, especially there are just bytes, right? So like one zero one zero over there, instruction. And the question is, can you flip the byte, uh, flip a bit over there, so turn one, turn one bit from zero to one, one zero to one to zero. But the assembly, like, see, still do the similar or identical functionalities as the original assembly does. So this is like a, a flip bit flip resistant. Assembly or shell code. And why might that be useful? Why would it be useful to write code that can survive a bit flip? Yeah. Yeah, bit flips definitely happen randomly. Where do they happen more often? In space. In space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you want to like send code, so what they have to do is have really expensive hardware. It's called RAD safe, uh, like radiation resistant hardware, which is usually incredibly slow and very expensive and probably heavy too. And so um, by exploring kind of things like this, could you compile something or write some code that can be resistant to random bit flips from radiation? Um, 
it's kind of an interesting uh, actual real world application for these things. Yeah, but bit flip, flip what happened for quantum machines, right? And that's why <laughs> you tell have, me, I have no idea. <laughs> and that's why we have a quantum uh, challenge in last year. So, you know, we have to advance our game as the technology advances well. Yeah. Okay. And then this is a picture about the, I think it's the, just an announcement or a scoreboard. Yes, that's the scoreboard. And we use this interface because this is very similar to a tool called AFL. Uh, it is a fuzzing tool that people extensively use to uh, find vulnerabilities. So we just kind of mimic a uh, AFL style scoreboard and you can see people from the visuals are the teams and those in red, uh, like AOE, they're all team names and their scores over there. Okay, and then as I mentioned, the final CTF is a tag defense game in the sense that teams are going to be given uh, identical services, but those services they are buggy, they're vulnerable, and those teams that they need to patch their own service and also exploit those vulnerabilities against the other team and. Uh, when you defend yourself, you will really get some score. Uh, well, actually, you don't really get scores. So, like, uh, when you attack other people, the other people lose scores, and also you will get scores. So, so like, you kind of get your own score if you defend yourself very well. Uh, and also, we have another fashion of the CPF called the Clean Up the Hill. This is there's one challenge that people need to play the challenge and be great. By some particular score, and then we're going to just sort people, give them, you know, score based on their rankings, and that's why we call it cleaning up the field. Uh, and here you see that those are the total scores for each of the other team, or the rankings based on the total scores. And also, there are people, or some teams who are very uh, good at attacking, or very good at defending, or very good at cleaning up the field. And if you remember correctly, this PPP year, one. yes, PPP one. PPP is the team uh, from my uh, mother's school at PPP one that year. I guess this is the last year that PPP won, right? And yeah, since 2020, PPP was the second, yeah, PPP started to be the second place. But PPP has been won for many times, many years. Um, yeah, and then this is this year's, right? Yeah, I can yeah. talk about it briefly. I kind of wanted to bring this up. So 2019 was the last year we had it in person. 2020 uh, was all DEF CON the conference and the CTF was all virtual. Uh, we created this horrible like 28 hour day system where teams would play for eight hours and the game would go down like, or they would, yeah, I can't, it was, oh yeah, it was like play for like eight hours eight and then hours. go down for four hours right. and then on for eight hours and then down for four hours and on for eight hours. Yeah, because of time horrible. zone, because, you know, usually those teams, they're international, they're coming from all different countries and we want to be fair. So we want to make sure that everyone has their own comfortable eight time to work on the challenges. Yeah, and so this was in 2021, it was a hybrid year. So both us and the teams, half of us roughly were in person and the other half were remote. And kind of why I wanted to bring this up is uh, from my experience, it was much more difficult being hybrid than fully virtual. Um, so keep that in mind as we're you know struggling and maintaining uh, simultaneous uh, Zoom classrooms with in-person and all that stuff that can be it actually can be, I mean, I think, well, I like seeing all of your faces here in the classroom, um, but just bear with us. It can be a little tricky, especially with uh, people um, getting sick and having to attend remotely. So just keep it in mind. Uh, it actually becomes slightly more difficult. Um, oh yeah, that was me. So if oh, you know- Oh, damn it. I was about to let them guess. Who that oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's Jan, uh, Jan Shoshoshashvili, a professor here with the Mohawk who uh, teaches 466. Kind of a very advanced version of this course um i man i'm losing the context because this was so long and it was so painful i like put it out of my mind uh but i think i was staying up for oh no i just pulled an all-nighter to get a bunch of stuff that they needed working and i was so cold that he brought the like uh tablecloth as a blanket for me um, and then later I ended up uh, taking a nap under the thing because I had been up for over 24 hours and I was like dying trying to like do stuff, but I didn't want to leave and go to the hotel room in case they needed me for something. So, um, but luckily I got my payback. So this was Jan uh, the next day, the next night he had to do pull an all nighter 
And when I showed up in the morning, he was like huddled under the table there. Um, and yeah, but the cool thing was we retired. So that's, I, we don't ever have to do this again. It was an insane uh, amount of work. Can I guess how old which is Adam? Far right. Far right, this guy? Oh no, I can't. Yeah, I'm with the hands, hands up. up. That yes, that's Adam. Oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, and then uh, Tiffany didn't participate so much in our last DEF CON because she was uh, busy doing something else. Yes, I was uh, busy with uh, hatching a baby, actually. So, and this is the baby. And, but now you see that I'm here. So good, baby is done. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. So have some of my free time to talk with my students and do something that I really enjoy. All right, so that's about that car and that's about CTF. And now let's talk about security and especially security at CF at ASU. Sorry. So here at ASU we have two integrated cybersecurity concentration programs. And we have you know one called a BS in computer science and then we have a BSE in computer system engineering. And also we have three graduate cybersecurity concentration programs uh, which is uh, there is a MS, MCS, which is Master, Master of Computer Science, I think it's, yeah, Master of Science and Master of Computer Science, probably. I don't think so, but I don't remember. Actually, I think the MCS went away, so maybe I need to update that. Yep, yep. And then, it, it used to be thesis versus non-thesis, so it used to be oh, the MS was a thesis option and the MCS was a non-thesis non option, mm -hmm. but now I actually think MCS is the fully online version and MS is both thesis and non-thesis. I see. Anyways, doesn't matter. Yep. And also we have PhD um, program. And usually we like, you know, ASU students, we like undergrads. And the way that our lab CEFCOM works is that we are open for students who are talented in cybersecurity. And uh, of course, interest in cybersecurity wants to pursue cybersecurity as their career or research, you know, PhD career as well. So if you are interested in cybersecurity and if you are interested in doing cybersecurity research, please feel free to reach us out uh, personally and then we can direct you on how we can start, you know, uh, to explore some research on cybersecurity. And for more information about the security programs at CMU, you can just- ASU, you're not at CMU. Oh, anymore. damn it, again. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry for that. So yeah, for cybersecurity programs at ASU, please refer to you know more information from the state. CMU of the Southwest. <sighs> All right, and it- quick about the concentration. Yeah. Okay, yes. So this is a quick walk through I for the concentration. So yep. anyways, if you're interested, if this is something that appeals to you, uh, the cybersecurity, you're actually already basically one third of the way through the required courses for the concentration. So the concentration requires you to have taken this course, and then you select two from those other 400 level courses. And there's also two other elective courses from a list to take, and that's it. And then you get on your, uh, I think that concentration is on your degree. So it says a concentration in cybersecurity on your degree, if that's something that interests you. All right. And also we have, you know, those different more fun classes and they're more advanced. So if you're interested in them, just take them. Um, also, what do we want to say? Oh, I want to say, say like a secure, yeah, go ahead. We're not, we're a national center of academic excellence reg, recognized by the NSA and the Department of Homeland Security. So right. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Not every university have this kind of privilege. Okay, now it's time for now us to walk through syllabus. the syllabus. Yeah. You'll need to move it over to the other. Yes. Oh. If I can, I probably can't do that. I have to end this. Yellow. And then me concentrate. There we go. Ah, there we go. 
and you can see it here if you want. I see. Thank you. And Zoom people are supposed to can also yep. see uh, the syllabus, right? Cool. All right. Let me just shoot me a little bit more. Yes. Can you guys see that heard? Okay, so now let's just walk through the syllabus of the uh, of our uh, course. And also, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me anytime. I'll also Zoom people if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to just unmute yourself and shout because sometimes I cannot really track Zoom and the uh, in class people at the same time very well. So feel free to just shout. All right. So uh, course description, like since you guys are know, I suppose that you already know, this is a cybersecurity course, cyber course uh, of course. And this course will give you a basic and comprehensive understanding for uh, cybersecurity, or we call it uh, the problems of information assurance and the solutions to those problems. Um, and this is kind of like the fundamental uh, class for cybersecurity. And as Adam introduced, uh, based on this class, you will be able to get more advanced topic class or more advanced four level classes. Uh, um, you know, um, and but this class, our class, this one will give you kind of an introduction uh, of a brief, uh, maybe I call it teaser or just like, a, you know, give you a okay. brief yeah. feeling about right. all brought like of uh, in general, each different kind of more specific like site system security or uh, network security, different areas of cybersecurity. But we will probably cover a lot of more content over there, but not as deep as those like four level classes. And the prerequisite, because uh, our class will need to, you will need okay. to. They have to sign up. To sign up for classes, they have. Okay, so we don't have so, to talk about prerequisite yeah. then. Good. But I want to say that uh, my advice for everyone since it's just start, if you want to you know, prepare for the future, I highly recommend you to, you know, kind of like wrap up on your programming skill. You can program in C or Java, just like make sure that you can program well or Python. Um, and also uh, we're gonna have uh, assembly related topics. So if you are not very familiar with like say, x 64 assembly, make sure that you learn it, you understand it, you can read it well. And that will be pretty essential for our later lectures and assignments. All right. And then we have a recommended textbook, although we're not going to be stick to that textbook. And you can go purchase that textbook and get the information, you know, get the knowledge from there. And in terms of course communication, as we mentioned, we're going to be uh, majorly using Piazza. And you can get the link from here, and then you can register yourself to the class. And please make sure that you ask for those questions to Piazza. And we always just prioritize Piazza over our email. So if you ask questions on Piazza, you will get an earlier response than email. But if you wanna have like really in-person questions, for example, you wanna have a sick leave or whatever, you can email us uh, like using our own ASU account. But for anything that is cost related, Say assignment, etc. Please make sure that you use class Piazza. All right, and here is a small link that uh, you can go to and then check yourself for how to ask questions smartly. And I found that this is very interesting uh, and that's very helpful and constructive because it tells me what is the best way to communicate. What it tell me how to save the time for both you and me so that we can focus on things that are more important. And I do receive you know, some questions before, so they ask me like, hey, professor, I don't know how to do this. Or professor, I really can solve this challenge. Can you give me any hint? And that's it. But this is gonna be very hard for me to catch or to follow up because I have to, to like do this ping pong for another iteration and ask him or her, like, why do you think so? What's going on? 
where you get stuck. So maybe a better way to communicate is you just give me all you what you have done, but you know when you ask me questions at the first time, and maybe perhaps with like maybe screenshot or a command that you have tried and tell me the failure that you have come across or maybe the messages that you have come across so that I can give you more concrete feedback on how to you know solve a challenge. So things similar like that, and I recommend you to just go through this. It can be some, you know, some casual reading or bad readings for, for this page. And I believe that this really will help you to understand how you should communicate with other people. Not only just for this cause, it's just like in general for your own career in the future. Okay. And then what else? Course topics. So as I mentioned, this class will be a, will cover a lot of a, a very broad course topics, but not very deep. So we will have things like access control. Um, Adam will probably start that since the uh, next uh, lecture, right? Something like that. Yeah, we'll something like that. We will see. Right. Yep. Yeah, access control, and then we'll have cryptography. Uh, we will have authentication, network security, web security, uh, software security, system security, etc. Basically, it will cover a lot of stuff. And then for assessment uh which is homework or say as as well as final ctf basically we're gonna assess everyone based on platform with challenges and you're gonna just go there just like the jeopardy uh challenges that you've seen and also like you've seen from our previous ctf slide although not as fun as that kind of gooey but still pretty fun and then uh for assignments there'll be about three to twelve i know this is a very wide range uh because we usually just decide the number of assignment as we go as we you know see people's progress so i give you a range now meaning that it can be very light it can be also super heavy but it i mean Based on previous feedback from students, I would say maybe we class we still is going to be an intensive programming class. So you will probably still need to spend a decent amount or uh, a reasonable amount of time to finish all those you know challenges. However, usually the scores is not really bad as long as you make your effort and get a challenge, and you will be able to get a very good score in the end. So we will have two CTFs, a midterm CTF and a final CTF. And the way that we grade is as follows, like we have 70% for homework, 10% for midterm, and 20% for final. This is just the threshold for the letter uh, grade at this point. As I said, it's going to be subject to change, doesn't really matter. And then for homework, due and exam date. Oh, wait, one, one important thing. Yes. Uh, when we talk about curving on there, so we'll only ever curve the grades, the thresholds lower. So we won't ever raise it up, meaning, I don't know, if you are get a 83 in the class, that's going to be at least a B. It may be a B plus, depending if we lower the threshold for B plus down. But it won't ever be like a B minus or a C. So you don't have to worry about that. So it's only, the curve only ever works in your favor. All right, get A plus. Let's just reduce them and then make them A. No, not, it won't happen. Cool. Exactly. <laughs> Highly unlikely, yeah, from what I've seen. There's usually plenty of A pluses at the top. Uh, okay. And uh, for homework, you. Oh, so the way that we do for homework is that it's okay that you, um, you know, you want to maybe delay your homework, uh, you want to submit late, however, you will have a penalty because of the late submission, but you won't just like lose all your scores. So the way that it works is that, uh, say, if you're late for one day, then you're going to be deducted by 20%. And then if you're late for two days, then you'll be your score will be deducted by 40%. So every day, as long as you increase one day late, uh, you make your uh, homework assignment one day late, then your score will be deducted by the uh the number of the days that you delay times 20 percent so basically this means that after five days then you will lose your 
all the points from the assignment. Right. And then in terms of exam dates, we don't have exams, so. right? So we don't have exam, but like for sign final and yeah. uh, and the midterm, we will give you a period basically. So it's like take home exam. You will be given a period of time, maybe three days or two days or twenty four hours, and then you will be you know doing this assignment or the final exam by yourself. Okay. Okay, and. This is something that I really want to emphasize or to have a clarify because this is a new thing that we add. We call it homework help blackout. Basically, we want to make sure that we can still sleep. We're not, we want to make sure that we're not going to be insanely crazy or be occupied. Uh, like in the last minute of the assignment deadline, just answering people's questions. And then thank you for saving us, not only just Adam and me, but also other TAs, CGTAs. So we're gonna black out those time. Uh, say if the deadline is um, 11.59 p.m., like basically the midnight, then we are not gonna answer questions since to uh, 6 p.m. So six hours before the assignment or CTF deadline, we're gonna close out and we're not gonna answer any questions. And in this case, please make sure that you ask questions and start everything early so that you can come across those questions. Because in the end, I don't want someone to be like doing, still doing none of the challenges, but start to realize how many questions that you have. And at that point, no one can really help you with that. And usually we will have extra office hours if, if needed for final CTFs or, for, or also for the midterm. So you can also you know, come to us and ask us for additional help before the closeout time. Okay. And then for uh, special accommodations, if you have any concern about your you know, health or disability, feel free to do that. Uh, also, I know about this, you know, current COVID situation. Uh, so first of all, you don't have to come to class if you want. And also, if you need accommodation, you can also email Adam or me um, foundations and we will help you from there. All right, for uh, algorithm and the cheating, you are welcome to ask other people how to solve a challenge, but you are forbidden to copy paste other people's code. Yeah, I think this is going to be clear and you can collaborate. Like you can collaborate in a way that someone tells you, oh, you are wrong because of this, but you have to write the code very good. And also when you ask questions to us, uh, uh, debugging work for you, unfortunately, just because we have too many students to take care of. Um, so, uh, but if you can really minimize your question, like just think about, you know, a question that we can answer you real quick, let's say in five to 10 minutes, you can help, you can ask us questions like, I come across this specific error, this error says permission denied, what does it mean? But before you ask questions like that, please make sure that you Google yourself first because many questions can be answered by Google. And this is like cybersecurity. And also this is, this is something that we would always do when we come across problems. So make sure that you Google first. This is also be a good way that you can self-learn. And then if you still have questions, you can come to us and we will help you out in our best. Nice, good. Okay, uh, something more work-life balance. I just wanna say that, you know, again, we come across this tough semester because of COVID and we very much understand this tough situation. And so don't feel guilty if, if you don't feel comfortable or because of your own thing or because of your families and so that you cannot make the, meet, make the class or you have to maybe ask for an extension or et cetera. So don't feel guilty for that. 
and always just keep us in loop so that we know how to help. Also in terms of Title IX as well, you know, this is a good organization. If you ever come across any problem, uh, feel free to contact them or also you need to, you can contact us. And for us, if we have heard about anything about, you know, those kind of issues, we are obligated to Title IX to the school organizations. So if you do need us to report for you, feel free and then come and talk to either Adam or me. We're happy to be here. Okay, I think that's everything about the course logistics, the introduction, any questions? And also any questions from Zoom? Really? Yes. Uh, where will the recording be posted? It will be recorded on YouTube. And let me just go to the website oh, yeah. real quick. That's a good idea. Yeah. Close schedule. See like links later on. So basically in the select schedule webpage, YouTube, or the video links and yes uh, how long after class do you think it'll take to be posted uh usually we'll make it within one day or two depending so the problem is we can release the slides very quick sometimes the the video may take some time it's just like youtube we have some time to process the video usually but, yeah. by the night the problem is we have to post the tuesday video so they can watch it before thursday right so yeah as quick as we can but sometimes it stuff happens yeah i would say like 24 hours is a good estimate all right, more question? All good? Cool. Okay, then now I'm gonna uh, hand the lecture to Adam and Adam will give you a nice overview for the, uh, yep, yeah, for the, our course and for in general cybersecurity. All right. Yes. There you go. Yes. All right. Test. Test. There we go. Can you hear me? And what? I don't want to jump open. Okay. And share screen. Oh, thank you. Also, guys, we're also thinking about having a Discord channel, just so you guys know. Oh, they already have one. Oh, you already, already have? I already joined it. Nice. While I was waiting, hmm. it's in the Zoom chat if you want to scroll up. Yes. All right. What is. So people on Zoom, can you see? Oh, you see that. Okay. And Zoom, you see the uh, so the slides, the big slides. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh yeah, this is gonna be tricky getting the Zoom chat. All right, we'll have to figure that out. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, thanks everyone. I'm gonna handle the first part, talking about the overview of security. Uh, this is kind of getting our feet wet, talking about security. Right now, we only have a little bit of time, so I'll just go over the beginning. Uh, before I jump in, um, uh, I'll mention that um, basically because of this first week, the way it is and the way the cadence of the course, Thursday is going to basically be a repeat of today for those people on Thursday. So uh, everyone here who's listening now, it's just going to be exactly the same. So don't feel like you need to attend or watch the video on Thursday. It's going to be a repeat, uh, but next week we'll start Tuesday, Thursdays. You'll be responsible for the content in both parts. All right. So we're here to talk about security. What is security? What does security mean to you? Anyone want to give me a thought on that? 
Yeah. Protecting your information. Protecting, say that last part. Protecting your information. Yeah, do you care about that? Yeah. Does anybody not care about their information? Do you walk around with your like bank account number just handing it out to people? No? So you actually do care? Your pictures, just every picture you take with your phone just automatically uploads to Twitter? No? Nobody does that? Okay, that's probably good um yeah so we we it's very clear that like we do have this notion of security you can think of security in a lot of ways right very broadly you can think of physical security you can think of here we're here to talk about mainly computer security it's actually interesting to see those two connect uh many uh systems what they call scada systems or industrial control systems uh basically like big big machines that are operated by computers. If somebody hacks into that, you can actually cause physical damage in the real world. Um, so those two often are actually linked there. Uh, typically when we think about security, we kind of, we think about a triad of things that we care about. So uh, this is super important to remember. It comes up all the time. You can, it has a super easy to remember acronym as well, the CIA. Uh, so we have confidentiality. So what does confidentiality mean? Yeah, keep certain information either secret or control so that only the people you want to control that information actually controls that information. Right? We can think of like we just talked about with pictures, right? Pictures would be a place that we want confidential and we want to be able to control who has access to that information. Um, so there's notions of access control who can access what everyone here has an Isaac card, right, that gets them into certain areas and buildings and those kinds of things. That's another clear example of physical security properties there. Uh, we'll get into things like encryption, where you can actually encrypt something and use math to hide information so that even if I sent like a piece of information to every single person in this class, it would only actually be accessible to me. Um, but, but keeping things secret isn't actually the only thing that we care about. Um, if somebody were to hack into your bank account, and maybe if you, you don't care what, if they know what the number is, what if they could change that number to zero? Would that be a problem? Some of you, yes. Some of you are nodding no, that'd be great. Bring you back closer to positive. So we also care about the integrity of data. So there, that's a case where we actually don't care that the data has been, um, has been leaked or, or gone out. We actually care about the integrity. We care that the data is, hasn't been modified or tampered with. Uh, accuracy is tricky because that has to do with like provenance, maybe like where did that data come from, right? So like a, um, you could think of maybe a, um, a speed radar gun, right? That monitors the speed of somebody I actually may not know how accurate that machine is. Maybe it, it's inaccurate, but I would want, so for integrity purposes, I'd want to be able to say, Hey, whatever the police logged that thing, they couldn't just claim later, oh, it read 65 when it actually read 55, or if you're in a 55, right? It, it, the machine itself could still be wrong, but so accuracy gets a little bit more difficult uh, to assess. Um, and so we usually think about for integrity, two different things. How can we prevent people from modifying and changing our data? Um, another thing to think about integrity would be if, uh, I was able to go in and maybe I couldn't access your pictures, but I was able to just delete all the, or uh, scramble, like put uh, random data over all of the uh, pictures on your phone. Um, so we care about preventing people from doing that, but also detecting. So sometimes we want to detect when data has been tampered with and changed. So in the instance of that, if I could tell, oh, hey, this report that they're saying that this uh, the speed gun took this rating at this time that's actually been changed and altered and we can detect that after the fact. Uh, so we have cool actually cryptographic ways to try to ensure these things. Um, and then the so we have three, two of the three legs of the triad confidentiality integrity, the other super important part is. Um, actually availability was that seems kind of weird why is availability, uh, why do we care about availability in terms of security yeah. Yeah, so if you can't access your stuff right that's actually a huge type of attack like think about it well. Um, 
Think about this room, right? We need access to this room to have class. If somebody were to bar or weld all the doors shut, like the day before an exam, that would be an attack against our ability to conduct our business. Um, the other way I like uh, thinking about availability is not completely shutting things down. So one of one tactic that criminals use uh, when they try to like break into a bank digitally, what they'll do before that, they'll get collect uh, reconnaissance and information on the different email addresses that are people who work security for that bank. And then what they do is they send a bunch of spam emails, but not just like, hey, buy Viagra spam or your car warranty spam. This is like just randomly generated emails with random gibberish and words that don't mean anything, but all they're trying to do is clog up the inbox so that when they break into the a thing and some intrusion detection system sends the team an email, it gets missed in this flood of emails. And this has actually been a real attack that people have used. So it's more like an attack on the availability of somebody's attention even. Um, and so typically in here, we think kind of about, um, Denial of service is one of the most classic forms of availability attacks. This actually occurs uh, fairly often. So criminal outfits will get control of a bunch of machines on the internet, and they'll use those to direct fake traffic to a website to take it down. Now you can't really do that to like Google or Microsoft or Amazon because they have a lot of power and compute, they can stay up. But if you target a small to medium sized business that depends on their website for revenue, and you take the website down and then you send them an email that says, hey, I saw your website that is down. That really sucks. Um, you know, if you sent uh, a half a Bitcoin to this Bitcoin address that I'm sure I could get it back up and to prove it to you, I'm going to take it back up for 10 minutes. And you send that email, they get the email, you take, you turn it back on for 10 minutes, you start your attack to take it down. And then you, your price would just keep going up as to how much it's going to take to get you to stop. Uh, so this is a real attack that also occurs uh, to small and medium sized businesses. So CIA, remember this, burn into your brain. It's a super important part of thinking about the security properties of a system. And I guess that's great here. So we'll stop here on Tuesday in a week. We're going to start back up on threats.